All right, welcome to the next step in our Communities of Grace leader training. Um, this session, we're, we've been walking through, we did the overview, we walked through confiding in one another. Today, I wanna to talk to you about praying for one another. And so this may seem like a given, like, of, of course, we, we pray at the beginning, we pray at the end of our meeting. Um, we got that covered, right? So yeah, we pray together, cool. Um, that's a good thing, but I, I want to mobilize something more than if we, if we want to have a biblical community, uh, prayer is a much more central thing. We want to be growing. This needs to be a, a big part of our meeting. And so we want our groups to be known for how they pray and the way they pray for each other, the way they pray for people outside of their group. That's one of the markers of a, of a Christian community that we want to see. So as, as you're doing this, we want to really create the kind of culture where prayer is at the forefront. So to start, let me just read something to you. So in James 5, 13 through 18, he says, is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the sky poured forth rain, and the earth produced its fruit. So as you read that, uh, that kind of long passage uh, in James, but as you read that, I want you to notice a couple of things. First, the, the powerful prayer ministry that the body of Christ has is, is meant to link up with the confiding part that we just talked about. If you see they're kind of interwoven in there, they confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, right? Those things work together. So as we're opening up and confiding, there's a natural inclination that we need to be able to pray for the things that are coming up. If we're not including God in that, then we're just kind of a therapy group at best, right? So we need to engage the God of the universe into this process or all of it is just a man-made, no matter how effectively it works on a human level, it's just a man-made group. And we're never gonna be a part of a movement of God doing something miraculous if we're not committed to prayer. So it's all linked up with this confiding piece. So people share and we pray. And it, so a person has to acknowledge to someone else they're suffering. They have to confess that they're struggling with a sin. And, and so this part of the group should be a normal result of a safe, um, confiding kind of atmosphere. So as you go back there, notice how those interlink and how important it is to the community that we pray. Secondly, notice that the need to pray isn't just an individual exercise. If you're sick, it isn't just your individual faith in praying that's required. So God has structured our prayer life in such a way that he wants it to be a communal exercise. We're to be praying with one another. We are to call on elders to come around if we're sick. You know, we're, we're to share with someone else and have them pray for us. So if you're struggling, if you're struggling with a sin, if you are needing healing because you have some kind of sickness or whatever it may be, if you're needing to grow, we can't, it's not just my own faith and my own private prayer that it, I need to grow in. I need to learn how to pray with and receive prayer from others. So this is a community thing. So this is such a key part of how a small group operates if it's healthy, is that praying for one another becomes one of its strengths. So um, it's, if you can't, you can get into the room and you can get into your closet, so to speak, and pray for yourself. And you can grow in your own faith and trust in him. You can grow in your consistency and praying every morning when you're reading your Bible and some of those things. And those are good things as a small group you want to be growing in and challenging each other to, to say, hey, are, are, you know, how often are you really just spending time with God? So that is one component of it. And that's often in, in a much more individualistic society where our focus tends to go. But we also need to build this communal prayer thing. And so... It should be a byproduct of us bonding together. And like I said, all links together and working together. The third thing to notice is that it doesn't take a trained, battle-tested, prayer warrior person to do it. 
you just need to care and faithfully ask God for help. And that is the point of the reference to Elijah. We think of Elijah as this big prophet. He's a very well-known prophet uh, in, the, in the Old Testament. And so everybody goes, oh, well, Elijah, he's like the guy, right? But in 1 Kings 17, the way he's introduced, Elijah kind of comes on the scene during the time there's a wicked king, Ahab, that Elijah comes in. But it just kind of drops him in the middle of there when you're reading it in 1 Kings 17. That Elijah, he had no official office. He had no background to speak of. He was, he was a nobody before God gave him this message to speak. He was a guy who was burdened by what he saw. He saw wickedness around him, and he was a person who was faithful to listen to what God was going to say. And so in that, in that case, in the course of a chapter, you see just one thing after another. When Elijah just kind of appears on the scene, he's just a guy. But then God challenges him to bring this confrontation to Ahab and says, I want you to pray. I want you to pray that it doesn't rain. And when he does, he obeys God and he prays. It doesn't rain for three years. <laughs> I mean, and then there's these, these other miracles that come right on the heels of that with the, the prophets of Baal and then with this uh, widow where he's you know producing food and all kinds of things. And But the point that James wants you to get when you get into this passage, he wants to use Elijah's example, not for the specifics of how he prayed and what he prayed and the way he did it or his technique or anything like that. He wants you to know Elijah was just a normal guy. That's what James wants you to hear. He was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed, and these amazing miracles happen. So um, it's not just for the fully trained prayer warriors. We have a great healing prayer ministry at our church. We have people that, man, I would, I would, if I'm struggling with something, or people I would want to pray for me, certainly. And it's great to have those people who train and learn and build this habit of prayer, and they're they're our intercessors. But there's also a sense in which all of us have that expectation that we pray. Any one of us can hear of a need, see somebody struggling and ask our God to help, right? So if you're that person, and so you're taking ownership of this praying component, so you might be the facilitator of the group, or you might be the person that's just kind of charged with prayer in your group. Um, there are really two aspects that you're gonna to need to pay attention to. Um, you're praying for those kind of within your group. So there's the prayer within your, your meeting. But then there's also this prayer outside the group. So a, a healthy small group is growing in both of those things. So for praying within the group, um, you're going to want to play off that confiding time, uh, part of your time together. So if, if people share stuff, when you come in, you start the group meeting, you come in and you share, and people are talking about stressful things going on in their week, and um, they're sharing some struggles that they had, or they confess a sin that they're struggling with, or they share, you know, oh, we were trying to do this, and I didn't, I didn't do at all <laughs> what we talked about doing. When that, that happens, then we naturally want to pray for those things. And so pay attention carefully to the things people are sharing. If you're, if you're the prayer person, I would say be very engaged and watch for what you're hearing people share. You want to take note of the prayer requests people have. You want to take note when someone is, uh, when we're confiding in one another, we're sharing something, uh, whatever that may be, that th there's a time when someone is sharing something and someone says, oh, this is really stressful for me this week, or this is a big answer to prayer this week. You want to take note of that stuff and make sure you know that because you want to introduce that idea of praying for it. We'll start with, obviously, you want to have a regular pattern of how you pray within your group meeting. And so you can help lead that and choose where it fits. I often start it with the confiding part, and then I go right into praying right there. But some people will move that and they'll pray at the end over some of that stuff. I like to pray when the force of it is there, right? Like, so somebody comes in and they're just sharing. I like going straight into, okay, let's pray for that now, right? That we put those two pieces right together in time so that while I'm feeling the pressure or the stress or the, the shame from something, that we immediately go in and just pray to God about that right away. But um, you can kind of play around with that for your group as to where it fits the best. And so, but you want to have a regular pattern of asking and praying for the needs of the group and build that into your time together. But also, you as the person who's kind of the prayer person in your group, be the person who interrupts to pray for a need as well. When somebody shares something, we don't have to wait until we're going to pray later 
be the person that says, when you see somebody burdened by something that says, wait, let's just stop and pray over this person right now. I have, I can't tell you, like there's a number of times where I've been in a group meeting, whether it's here at the church or a small group meeting and different things. And when somebody stops and does that, somebody shares something really hard that they're going through. And instead of like, we just kind of go past that, which is kind of an easy church thing to do, you'd be surprised. Um, when someone says, wait, 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 let's just stop. Let's all gather around and pray over that right now. That is a powerful moment in a group. So be that person who spots it, who recognizes the opportunity, listen for it, watch for it, and ask the Holy Spirit to, to help you recognize it when there's a moment in your group that we need to just stop and pray and everything else needs to be dropped. God and being engaged, asking the Father for help is primary. So no matter what you're studying or what time you want to have to, to study the word or something like that, to say, if there's a need that necessitates us praying, that takes precedence, right? That we're willing to drop everything, follow the Holy Spirit and pray. So be that person. Sometimes the, the group won't think to stop and pray. And so you have that opportunity to bring this culture of prayer into your meetings. And as you lead the way with that, hopefully other people catch on as well. And they start to learn from that too. And they stop and say, hey, shouldn't we stop and pray for that? And now, you know, it's kind of like part of your culture because everybody buys in. But be that person to interrupt there. So growing in prayer, uh, but it is uh, powerful for within your group. But there is also this thing about having a prayerful focus outside. I want to build a habit of outward focus prayer, which is the harder one, right? Um, in our kind of American culture and the way church often runs, people are used to praying for themselves and somewhat used to playing within a small group, though that might be awkward depending on somebody's background. Um, but I find when we get into praying for people out in the community, praying for friends or family in my circle of influence, that kind of thing, most people don't do that. And it's not just they don't know how to do it in like a powerful way or something like that. It's that they don't do it at all. And a lot of people have never gotten a habit of reaching out and praying for people. So who are you regularly praying for in your circle of friends and your family? Uh, a little while back at here at Grace, we did a 30 day prayer challenge and we're, we're still doing that now. There's a lot of people still using that structure that have just kind of kept going with it. And the idea was just to build a simple structure that allows us to habitually reach out and pray for those in our circle of acquaintances. So this should be a habit for everyone. I mean, it, this isn't the, the super spiritual prayer warrior thing. This is just the simple, am I in the habit of asking somebody, can I pray for them? and actually praying for them. You know, the things that we, we kind of know we should do, but we just never get in the habit of doing them. So, you know, we can all ask somebody what they need. There are always, for every one of us, there are people in our circle that no one else is really that connected to. Someone didn't really know that they had this big thing going on this week and we know about it and we can ask God for help. So it's amazing how a simple habit um, can dramatically change our perspective on walking with Christ. Um, this, this simple act of regularly every day reaching out to somebody um, and praying for them can put you in the path of the work God is doing um, with people. We get to experience it when someone calls you back and says, hey, you know, you prayed for me yesterday and this powerful thing happened. You know, I, I had an experience recently with a guy that, that lives out of town that I, um, I had texted him and, I, and he's a guy who, who does some um, some missions work and he, he needed funding. And I asked him, I, I said, you know, anything to pray for today. And he said, Hey, I, I'm, I'm running real tight on funding. I could really use, uh, I could really use an influx of some money because we're, we're running tight on maybe 30 days out uh, on our budget. And so I prayed for him. It was simple. I texted him a prayer and uh, he responded to that later that day. And he said, Hey, I got a big check in today. <laughs> you know, when that happens, man, that charges you up to feel like I got to, I got to be a part of that. I, I had in my simple little way, just for asking and sending a little text back in those two minutes, I got to own a piece of that and ask God for help and to see that God stepped in and did something. And, and God loves us to take partnership with him in doing those things. And doing that prayer is a simple part of that. We are an active participant then. We're not just a spectator. And that's what you want as part of your smarter. We want to be active participants in what God is doing not just watching it and talking about it. So part of your responsibility in your group is to encourage this kind of habit. So that means checking in on this process when you meet, but 
perhaps also during the week. It might mean texting the members of your group and saying, how's it going? We said we were going to do this this week. You know, how, how did you check in on anybody? It might mean praying for them during the week and reaching out and doing that. You want to start creating this culture that this is a habit. This is what we do is that we pray for one another. So if you haven't done it yet, if you didn't do the 30 day prayer challenge that we did before, I'm going to challenge you to start doing it now. And before you even try and get your group going, I would say you start and set the tone for that. So here's how it works. Just take out a piece of paper. And when you're done with this video, take out a piece of paper, write one through 30 down on a piece of paper. And I want you to start writing names of people who are 30 people that you can reach out to. So that 30, that one through 30 corresponds to, you know, the days of, of the month. So you're looking for each day, you're going to look at, okay, today is the 26th. So I'm looking at the 26th. And I'm going to go to number 26 on my prayer calendar, and that's the person I'm going to pray for. So each day when I reach that person's name, I see who they are, and I will either text them or call them. And I'll say, hey, is there anything specific I can be praying for? And sometimes if I know something that they've been asking about, I might say, hey, I'm praying for you and your family and this thing going on. But is there anything else specific I can be praying for today? Very simple. You want to keep it simple because you, you don't want to take a lot of time where you're going to give up on it. You want it to be a simple thing every day that I'm just getting the habit that every day I reach out to somebody and I pray for them. And when they give you a prayer request, they come back and they say, hey, I've got a you know scary meeting with my boss today. Can you just pray that that goes well and that I'm confident and able to speak my mind? And when I, when I hear that, then I respond either in text or on the phone, depending on which, but I make sure I pray for them right there. I make sure they hear me or see what I pray so that they know how I'm praying, but also that they know that I actually did pray. And I just, just say, I'm praying for you. Um, they, they actually heard what I prayed and that becomes a powerful thing. And I've had multiple people say, oh, the, the prayer that you sent me, like I've, I've read that back over several times today. It's just really stuck with me. Some things that God spoke to me during that time. That, that's a powerful thing. So respond to it in kind. So as you, as you sit down right now, when you're finished with here, I want you to write that one through 30, but don't start with one. I want you to, to look at the date today whenever you're watching this video. And whatever that number is today, start there and put the most obvious name you can think of. Like your, your best friend, the person you know will respond, You know your friend or family member, who's the most obvious person you can do right now. You know they'll give you a prayer request and it's easy for you to respond to. Right. So I want you to put that person down for today's number. And then I want you to take the number, uh, the people within your small group. And I want you to write the next several will be the people from your small group that are core committed people. Write those those as your next several days after that. That will get you started. Right. Sometimes it takes people a little bit to get the whole 30 down and figure out, ah, I've got about 20 names. And I still got 10 left. And I don't want you to wait to start praying while you're trying to figure out the next several people, right? Get, you know, you can get a week's worth down there pretty easily and get started doing it while you're figuring out the rest of those names, but don't miss the chance to start reaching out and praying, start doing it. And then as you get, you know, used to doing it here this next week, you know, with your small group and you get into it, then introduce it to them. Some of them may have done it already because they, they are familiar with the prayer challenge and maybe did it with us. And if they're already doing that, awesome. They become kind of your like advocates with you that they're already on board too. So that's awesome. You already have some momentum, but don't labor too long on who to put in there. The point is to get started and start reaching out and praying for one another in simple ways and get your group to do it too. So this gets us doing prayer during the week. So we're going to, we're going to be reaching out and praying during the week. And then when we come back together, that's a simple thing for you as the prayer leader to, uh, have them check in on to say, hey, anything happened with that, you know, and get stories from people. Certainly that's the best seller of it when people have stories. So just like I told that story of reaching out to somebody, tell those stories that you have for yourself, ask them for their stories as they're doing it, because it will happen. God's going to move. You're reaching out and praying for somebody every day. You're going to have moments where God does something. You want them to share that and get excited about partnering with God in ministry. And so we, we can all do that. So Get on that today. Like I said, get started. Text someone right after you get done with this video and say, all right, I'm going to pray. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to take five minutes to pray for somebody in my life that's, that's really important to me. And I'm going to get started doing it with my group as well. This will be just a huge game changer for your small group if you can build this habit into your group. So next time we're going to get into the, the next phase of this, it can kind of lead into practical how do we help? We're asking God to, to jump in. But next time we're getting into how can we practically help one another 
we often are the first line of defense on that. So until next time, we'll see you then.